Welcome to Saving Us, where we discuss relationships in marriage, family, and beyond. Relationships are hard work and should be a priority. These discussions are here to help you navigate the waters of insecurity and frustration and hopefully guide you to a place of peaceful fulfillment in your own relationships. Welcome to Saving Us, where we discuss relationships in marriage, family, and beyond. Today's topic is going to talk about dreams, goals, and plans. Uh, before we get started, we want you to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can get notifications when new episodes come out. Now, this is our second season, and we are so excited to get started, and we're so sorry that it's taken so long for us to get started with our second season, but you know, life is happening. You know, COVID's going on, and we got, got a new president, and uh, we just have got a whole lot of stuff going on. So we're getting into it. We want to do at least 12 episodes. Is that right? 12 or 13 me. episodes for this season. <laughs> and then we'll take a little break and prepare for it the next season. All right. So just remember, like we said, subscribe, hit that bell and hit like. Let us know that you're listening. All right. So let's get into it today. We're going to start a new segment this uh, this season. And the segment is called positive words positive words so we're going to, going to focus on things that are positive now this doesn't have to be a vocabulary word but it could be or it could be something positive that happened to one of us or some a positive word that we want to give out to the world through mm. the podcast okay so my positive word for today is affable now ask me what affable means. <laughs> what does affable mean? <laughs> <laughs> affable means to be friendly, good-natured, or easy to talk to. And mm. my word af is affable because that is a goal for me for this year. <laughs> to be friendly, good-natured, and mm. easy to talk to. You don't think you're easy to talk to? Many people mm. have told me I am not easy to talk to. <laughs> so I would like for it. Uh, there to be a change in people's perceptions of myself <laughs> so that I can be easy to talk to. So I'm going to learn how to use the word affable more in my vocabulary to make it part of my conversation. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's my word. What's your word? Uh, my word is breviloquent. Because yes. he, his gift is talking. That's why his word is <laughs> breviloquent. <laughs> Go ahead. <Yeah. laughs> what probably does breviloquent mean? Yeah, that's probably true. Um, really, at its core, uh, it means to be concise, but it's really kind of specific to when you're speaking or making a speech or writing, you know, writing a book or writing an essay or a paper, that type of thing. So it's marked by brevity of speech, you know, brevity use, of speech, use fewer words. There you go. Because I kind of feel like like I'm doing right now. A lot of people just Keep talk talking. and, you know, have to explain, 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 explain and Sometimes you just just say what it is, which I think you do very well. See, I think that's why we. I am we, quite breviloquent. Yes, and <laughs> she he is very, not. Yeah, she's. He very goes around John's barn to say most of what he wants to say. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got to make sure get it all in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So those. Because really, no. Oh, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but those are our words for today: <laughs> affable, to be likable. To be a good natured and easy to talk to, or braviloquent, to be concise in speech or writing. So take yes. note, all you students <laughs> out there. All right, so like we said, today um, our topic is reaching your goals. So, goals, um, goals, dreams, and plans. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're late starters. I'm a late bloomer, so hey, that's what's expected of me. So, it's February. <laughs> Today is February 1st, Monday. Um, so, we are putting it out because I feel like for myself, if I say publicly what a goal or a dream is, I am more likely to achieve it <laughs> because <laughs> I put it out, it out there and it, it makes me a little more accountable. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what that's one reason why I chose this topic. So you ready? Yeah. Sure. All right. So what happens when reaching your goals is harder than you think? So mm -hmm. in your past experience, I'm asking you, when you've put a goal out there and it's it was harder than you thought it would be. What is your tendency? Is your tendency to give up? Is your tendency to push through? When it, when I find it harder? Yeah. Uh, I tendency, to be honest, is to give up. 
is to give up. Yeah. Do you know why? I think, or maybe not give up, but just, uh, what's the word, procrastinate more procrastinate. when mm-hmm. when it's harder than that mm-hmm. begins a procrastination mm-hmm. journey mm-hmm. of, oh, okay, you know, I still want to do it, but mm-hmm. you know, it's taking longer. I'll get back to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, so you don't procrastinate to get started, but when you mm. hit a, a roadblock, you, you right. fall back a little. Yeah. I'm a good starter. You're a good I'm, starter. I'm okay. a good starter of a lot of things. I have great ideas and I start a lot of stuff. You do. Well, do yes. you? Yeah. Especially books. Reading, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you? I always say I want to read, you know, twenty books this year, and uh, I find twenty great books. But I'll start reading mm-hmm. one, and and I really get into it. But then, you know, my attention span, I'll see another book or see a title, and just kind of look at it. Then I start reading that one, and next thing I know, I've got four or five books started, but mm-hmm. none of them complete. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And every, you know, some other things are like that mm-hmm. with goals. That's kind of just get you get started, but when get it's started. hard, you fall back a little bit. Right. I think I am. Uh, I'm not a good starter. I oh. think I think I'm a good dreamer. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm a good dreamer. I think that's the best word for it. I'm a dreamer. So what I've learned recently is if you if you want to achieve something, you have you need to know why. You need to know what you want to achieve. Mm-hmm. You need to know why you want to achieve it. You need to know how you plan to get there, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So I I know what I want to do. I am so much better at why I want to do things, which is has come I think recently. That's a big thing. Yeah. I've, I'm finding out. Well, yeah, why the finding out the, the why is so mm-hmm. important. And and in my old age, I've learned uh, <laughs> old, to <laughs> I've learned to uh, figure out why I want to do whatever. Mm-hmm. That how is really hard for me. Hmm. How is hard? How is hard, and because the hard, the how is hard, I don't start <laughs> until I figure out, until I can see, have some kind of reference from beginning to end. Okay. It's, so it's really hard for me to even start because I think for most things, when I start them, I see them through to completion. I'm not saying it doesn't take a long time. I'm not saying I don't That's take breaks. Good. I don't fall back and you know all that kind of stuff because I do. Mm-hmm. But I think you know what because because I take so long to start s- most things. Mm-hmm. When I start them, I know I want to do them. Right. Okay. And so I'll see them through the end. Now, do I start hard things? No, not most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the. That's- that's the key right there. Just don't start most, anything hard. No. Most of the stuff is Just not kidding. hard. Um, I don't know if that's... Uh, yeah, I think it's relative. Your doctor program is hard, I think. Well, it might not be hard for you, but no, listen, some of the stuff you're saying, it I'm is hard. It is hard, people. I ain't hard, doing that. Ain't it is hard. <laughs> All of you old people who want to go back to school, just rethink. Know what you want to do. Know why you want to do it. Right. And know how you're going to get yeah, there. I'm not saying you can't do it or shouldn't right. do it. But just but know just, what the yeah, goal is beyond... Getting that education because uh, is it really worth it? Uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see if it's really worth it. <laughs> I think it will be very emotionally satisfying. I, I hope. I hope it'll be emotionally mm-hmm. satisfying, um, but I think it will be. Yeah. Um, well, some things are like that too because you kept encouraging me. I would always complain about I never finished my you know undergraduate degree. I started college at Ohio State and then. Went to the army, came back and started working. And I used to always just complain about, <clears throat> I wish I would have finished. And she said, well, why don't you just finish? Mm-hmm. And uh, I did. And it really didn't do a lot for me financially, professionally. professionally yeah, yeah it, or financially. But it did satisfy. I mean, I'm, I don't think I'm better or, you know, uh, um, maybe a little wiser. But I mean, I, I don't think more of myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of, you know, arrogance or something like that because, you know, uh, or elite, you know, but something do you, like would that. You think, but, but would you think less of yourself if you, if you did not have... Probably, more? though. Yeah. yeah. It is, you said emotionally satisfying. Yeah, yeah. Even if nobody knew, it, it's not even about telling other people I graduated college. It's right. just I know. Right. And I, I feel good about myself. It's probably as much as starting and finishing. Right. I yeah. started it and finished, and finished it. Finished it, yeah. It gives you a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I think that's great. All right, we're yeah. going to move on. So we're going to talk about today. We're putting our business out a little bit. Why? 
because we're together and we have nothing else to do. So <laughs> what our goal is for, uh, as, as a couple and our family, <clears throat> one of our family goals is for this year, 2021. So mm-hmm. go for it, Dad. My goal is not to get coronavirus anymore. He did have coronavirus, you guys. So about uh, the weekend before Martin Luther King Day, he started feeling bad. So that Friday, Thursday night, Friday, something, he was laying around. And he has ADD, not not diagnosed. I say he has ADD. And uh, he was like being still, sitting down, which he does relax. But you know, you can tell when it's different. He wasn't moving. And I was like, oh. He doesn't feel good. And then on Sunday, he had to lay down in the office after he preached. And I was like, oh, no. So then Monday was a holiday, Martin Luther King Day. So he couldn't get tested until Tuesday. And he had the virus. So we spent two weeks in isolation and all that. So thank goodness he didn't have to go to the hospital. Thank God. No. And uh, but he's recovering. Yeah. He says he's still uh, still tired, still fatigued. Yeah, yeah, still fatigued a little bit. But all the other symptoms are gone. Yeah. So he tested negative about three, four days ago, Friday. Today's Monday. He tested negative Friday. So um, been a few days, been COVID free. COVID free. Yay. (laughs) And thank goodness none of the rest of us got it. That's yeah, right. So. Yeah, nobody in the whole house. Thank God for that. Well, I don't. I don't see my youngest daughter anyway. There's no way she would get it because she's in her room. <clears throat> you know. Plus, she don't hug me. She's but. old. She's 17, guys. She's 17. Yeah, but that's all right. Anyway, yeah, nobody got it. That was. <laughs> <laughs> that was I think amazing. it hurts his feelings because <laughs> she was his baby when she was born. She he he was the main well he did work during the day but when he came home from work he was the, the prominent caretaker of her day when she was little so yeah, she'll come around uh, yes yeah, she will I'm just gonna sing that what's that Jennifer and uh, I'm yes, right. telling you yes yeah, you're gonna love me you are gonna love and me, you girl. and you yes. her papa used to have to sing that to her oh so she didn't she's like just, that's either. right he, she, yeah. <laughs> she didn't like it. Yeah, that's right. She didn't. She or was that Nia? It was one of them. Might have, it might have been Nia. No, I think it was. I think Renee. it was Renee. I, I think, think it was, was Renee. Yeah, yeah. He used to sing to her. You gonna love me, girl? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, but uh, but anyway, yeah. Nobody else got it in the house, so that was good. Mm-hmm. We came through that. I was being so careful too, but anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess this is what happens. Yep, it just got on. <clears throat> He's out there doing the Lord's work and jumped yeah. on him. <laughs> but my for real goal, that's that's yeah. my, my for real goal. For real goal? Is that a yeah. saying? Okay. <laughs> is uh, is uh, to be, I guess, to be in better health. I would say weight loss. Um, mm-hmm. I have a goal of losing 25 pounds, believe it or not. Whether you believe that or not. And I've already lost 12 pounds. <laughs> Whether <laughs> so, I believe. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, okay, low key. This is low key. Oh, no, I'm going to save it for the end. Go ahead. I'm going to save oh, it for how sure? I really feel. Yeah. Oh, how I really feel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, but also to be in better health. Just not to lose weight, you know, but to build some muscle, you know, do weight, uh, some weight training so that I'm just healthy. My immune system is much better. Mm-hmm. Uh been eating healthier, mm-hmm. you know, so, mm-hmm. uh, and to know why, mm-hmm. um, I don't know if I should say, I've, I've been doing Noom. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, and that's been great because it's been, I mean, I'm not here to, uh, what is it called? Advertise. Yeah. Advertise for that. But but if you want to be a sponsor, we'll take it. <laughs> right. If Noom does. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what I do like about it is it's not, um, you know, like a diet plan or this is what you eat or yeah. low carbs, although I do need to eat low carbs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I do not get, I don't have diabetes and I don't want it. So right. I'm watching carbs for that reason. But um, it's psychology. I mean, it's, you know, it's all about why. Yes. Why you eat when you, why you eat when you eat, why you eat what you eat, you know, and all those type of things. And so it kind of changes your mind. But anyway, so I'm on the road to that goal. But That's just great. to be in... Better health. Better health. Yeah. Much better health. And so that way I don't have to, uh, when I quote all those healing scriptures, I don't have to look for miracles all the time. Yeah. I just live the way I'm supposed to. Yeah. Who, yeah. who, who used to tell you that the first year My, what? we got married? 
that you can't eat pizza every day oh. and then expect. <laughs> well, you know what, though? <laughs> yeah, that is true. You did I say did. that. But I lived right across the street. Before we got married, I lived right across the street from Pizza Hut. And I was single. What you going to do? You know, there's nothing else you can do. It's right there across the street. Mm -hmm. They had deals every day, mm -hmm. you know. And what then we got married and he was going out to eat lunch mm -hmm. every day with people. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It was, it was peer pressure. It was peer pressure. <laughs> I used to fuss. Yeah, mm -hmm. she did. I used to fuss. Yes. Mm -hmm. But but we get older and we know more and we do better, yep. right? So that's just right. keep on going. If any young people happen to be listening to this, you don't have to wait till you get older. Yes. To and don't no wish stuff. you were old. Right. This man here used to say he well, couldn't wait until he was old and had a big belly. I could never gain weight. Because he was so thin I, I when we weight. first got married. He was so he's he's not a big guy anyway. So he it was thin. It, he was good for his frame. You know, he was mm -hmm. he was thin. He was supposed to be thin. And he was saying, mm -hmm. I can't wait till I get old and have a big belly. <laughs> and now he doesn't want it. <laughs> We that's always want what we don't have for yeah. whatever reason. <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah. So one of my goals know. also is, oh, wait, I don't want to say it. Why? It's weight loss. Because <laughs> you said it now. You, start, you said I'm a starter. I don't so, want to say so now you got, it. Now you got to finish Because I don't want to be committed to I do. I Listen, I just want the weight to go away. That's what I, I, I'm wishing. That's what I want. I'm thinking what weight? But anyway. Okay. Because my belly sits on my stomach. No, you... <laughs> and I do I, I do that. all the sit-ups. <laughs> I do. I do the crunches. I do the sit-ups. I do it all. And I, and I do the cardio. <laughs> <laughs> now y'all learning the real me. <laughs> like, ah, yeah, yeah. But I do it all. It just I drink all the I drink like sixty to eighty ounces of water every day of my life. Then people. I would say you every you're, day you're healthy. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink tea. You know, I, I drink it, but not every day. Yeah. I don't drink soda ever. Um, I don't drink stuff yeah, like Kool Aid and stuff soda. like that. And I don't drink. I drink. A, I do drink fruit juices from time to time, like an orange juice or you know apple juice, whatever. Mm -hmm. Not every day. I, I mean, how many things can you give up? That's what I'm saying. Really? <laughs> well, see, how many things the... can you give up? I can't. Ugh. You need to start doing Noom. I already it's... know I emotionally eat. I know this. Well... And people be making me frustrated now. The first thing I do is go to carbs because they taste good. <laughs> but it gives you <laughs> alternatives, though, you know. <laughs> they satisfy that longing in my soul. I don't know if I'm ready to give it up. Girl. But this is, but, okay, I'm, I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it to the end. Mm -hmm. But, okay, so. Huh. Weight loss. So that's, Weight your, loss. that's your goal. And I need to lose at least, shoot, almost 25 pounds. At least 20. 25. You got 25 pounds? Where are you going to lose it? Yeah, I'll. I weigh almost 200 pounds. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm. Something to grab on to. That's too much. <laughs> that's who too I'm much. supposed to hug. That's too much. I don't want to hug no tree. So, we got to get it off. <laughs> I weigh more but you, now you're taller too. than I did at the end of my pregnancy. Let me see. Well, you had three kids. I think I weigh more now than I did at the end of Renee, the last baby. I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm, am no. I, if not, I'm right right within that range. I said I could be nine months pregnant and be this <laughs> no. way. You know, that's terrible. <laughs> She's just fine. She was... <laughs> that is terrible. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, God. Okay. But okay. Weight loss no, goal. Okay. 25 it. pounds. She said it. We write it down. Oh, 25. Lord. Okay. Ooh. Got till December. Oh God! So, there you go. <laughs> I can do. It. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We're gonna move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so our other goal together. Well, that was individual. Yeah. But together, our goal as a unit is in our finances. Yes. And it's to pay off at least one of our credit cards this year. Maybe, uh, you know, if the government's nice to us and gives us stimulus checks, we can pay off more <laughs> yeah, than well, one card. Right, uh, but yeah, <clears throat> but the goal is to pay off at least one. And it's not extremely high. The one we want to mm. pay off, it's not It's yeah. not ten over $10,000. To me, that's extremely high for a credit card. 10, yeah, yeah, that's a lot. But um, yeah, so it's, it's less than that. Yeah, much less. It's just that we, uh, you know, our finances 
right now. Yeah, we just want to get all that paid off. Yeah, so. don't allow. So we, when you get your doctorate degree, start making all that money. So, and all the teachers out there are laughing right now. <laughs> <laughs> making all that money but anyway it'll be more than what i've ever made in my life so i'll be happy there you go um yeah so that that's one of our goals and so we're gonna we're gonna update you guys <laughs> on how how well we're doing mm. and getting that getting that done right that's so good. when we figured it out earlier today we said it'd be t- 10 months yeah it would take us realistic. 10 months to pay it off so realistic so realistically realistic. that means that means what we budgeted to put toward it. That doesn't include like any extra income or extra jobs or anything. So hopefully we'll be able to even earn more than what we budgeted and be able to pay it off uh, sooner right. than 10 months. But that's our goal. There you go. And we are going to stick with it. We're going to stick so with it. So that is our what is to pay off one credit card. Now, why? Yes. What's our why? Well, so we can be, we can have more freedom to okay. pay off other, to pay off other, <laughs> other <things>. cards <laughs> <laughs> to give to help other people we like to help other people mm-hmm. we like to sow into other people's that's true. Well, we have over the course of our marriage true uh done that that's true you know and so we we like to do that yeah so that's that's our what and that's our why mm-hmm. and then we we are we made we a how. how we, we made, made a plan how. so we should be able to do it yep yeah, i'll tell you guys i got this from stacy abrams i listened to a podcast you all know who stacy abrams is um and that's one of her strategies to getting things done is knowing what you want to do, knowing why you want to do it, knowing how. I thought, that's it. That that clicked with me. You know, I was like, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. All right. So that's that. What else we got on here? How do you really feel? Okay. This is another new segment, guys. How do you really feel? Mm -hmm. So we're going to add this to our podcast every every week, every every time we do it. So another goal is to come to you weekly and not have long breaks in between. <laughs> and then, uh, and to, for me, is to read your comments. So send us comments. I am going to read them and <laughs> I am going to respond to them, okay? I'm going to make time. Make time. To read comments and respond to them. Okay, so how do you All really right. feel? Okay, so this is how I really feel about your weight loss goals. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm going to be the fatty and he's going to be skinny. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I feel like you started this before and I just don't know. If no, it's all just vanity. I just feel like I'm going to be the fat one and he's going fat. to be thin and fit and we're going to look like a cartoon. No, I'm trying to get to where <laughs> she I'm, is. Because I'm big. I'm trying to get to where you I'm are. I'm a big overbearing <laughs> person and he's no, small no, and no, likable. No, have all this. So the thing is, he, people like him anyway. What? Yeah, people are drawn to him and they like him. Oh. And I'm just the opposite. And I just feel like if he's opposite. thin and confident and everything, and I'm just <laughs> the way I am, it's oh going to be so goodness. hard. Oh, my God. Girl. That's how I really feel, though. I, that's so true. Okay. It is so true. That's how you feel. <sighs> I'm trying to catch up to you. So I think that's why I said weight loss, just so I can. But I hate competing. He competes. Everything's a competition with him. You just, but you just look at it that way. No, it to is. To me, it's encouraging. I'm encouraging you. No, Encourage. he competes. He competes. <laughs> and I hate, I hate competing. Oh, Lord have mercy. He does. Hmm? I can't. <laughs> so, okay. But that that is true. But anyway, <laughs> that's so true. Um, my only, my other... How I really feel is what I planned to say before the podcast, but just as he was talking, I had to say how I really (laughs) felt about that. I really feel lonely. Is anybody else out there feeling lonely? I feel so lonely. I feel like, okay, so this is another goal. I'm putting Mm -hmm. all my goals out here. Is to reach out to people just for like conversation. Once, uh, Once a week, twice a month, whatever. Just to reach out and be like, how are you doing? <laughs> you mm-hmm. making it, you know? Because I feel lonely for friends. And mm-hmm. I think it's hard as an adult, especially an old lady, to make You're friends. Not old. If you... Stop saying that. <laughs> You're not old. I am I'm advanced old. in age. I don't feel I don't feel like I'm I, I think I look my age, but you know, I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad at all. Right. But I, I'm advanced in age. <laughs> <laughs> um, but well, I think it's hard to you know to build to build friendships is hard yeah. at, as an adult than it is you know when you're kids because you know a lot of times when you're kid your parents orchestrate 
the opportunities for you to build friendships. You know, they invite people over and you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think, you know, as an adult, it's, it's hard. Well, plus it's hard for when me. you have a family, especially the way we did it, mm-hmm. where you focused on more on raising the kids. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you did a lot. I yeah. mean, you was taking care of the house. You, at, you know, back then you were cooking every day, every <laughs> single day, then. and on Sunday. That's, uh, that's true. Um, <laughs> I cook maybe once a week now. Which is just fine. I'm free. You, you, yeah, it's, it's just fine because you cooked a lot. <laughs> you know, I'll be mean, having to do that, not just physically, but you had to think of, you know, plan, what to have every day. Have, and plan menus for the week and all that. Plus going to school and, you know. So yeah. it's, it's, it's hard because you're, you're consumed with that. Yeah. You know, so yeah. now you're having an opportunity. All we got to do is get rid of her. I mean, wait till overnight. See, and then he says, Renee leaves. doesn't like him. Mm-hmm. You see how you talk about my baby? Talking about getting rid of my baby. Well, she, anyway, yeah. She's my baby now. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, so, so. you got Michael. He, he's a mama's boy. He's not. Oh, my goodness. We just have an understanding. Oh, he he's my is special boy. Spoiled. He's not. Mama's nice. boy. Oh, I my just bought gosh. Him, I just bought him fruit snacks and, and stuff fruit to snacks. take. This boy 19 years old. <laughs> he likes fruit snacks. About to turn 20 in college. He likes them. <laughs> he likes fruit snacks. Okay. <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> I All love right. him so. But anyway. All right. So you're going to reach out. You're going to reach out to people. Yes. All right. That's good. How do you really feel? Well, how I really feel, you asked me that, I was thinking, I don't you know about what. <laughs> so I'll just tell you very quickly how I really feel about church. Okay. Since I'm a pastor. Church as an institution? Church as an institution. Okay. I mean, we would saying how we really feel? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think church is flawed. And I, if I... If I wasn't who I am, you know, being a positive person, mm-hmm. I would be very dis, what's the word? Illusion. Disenchanted, disillusioned, disenchanted, and dis Courage. with all the everything. Yeah, <laughs> discouraged, disillusioned, disenchanted, any other word at the end of dis, <laughs> uh, I would be with church. Um, Why is that, sir? I think because it's it is... Typical, it is, uh, can be traditional, um, and uh, what's another word? Static. Predictable. Predictable and not relational, I think. And I know that's that's a sweeping indictment, you know, on church. church. But I've been in church my whole life. That's why I feel like I can say it. Since a baby, I was passed around in church as a baby. I mean, and so, um, you know, I've been I've been to all kind of different churches. I mean, I've been to black church, vineyard church, what different kind, Presbyterian, what else? You've been to culturally been to, black, culturally yeah, white well, culturally, churches. yeah, and denominationally, yeah, 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 different, a different as you as she yeah. has, you know. But on the other hand. <clears throat> I love church. <laughs> yes, she loves church. <laughs> I she do. Loves it. Loves it. Loves it. <laughs> as long as I don't, I don't like traveling. As far as I, that's the only issue I have right now. But uh, yeah, if if we went to church like around the corner, yeah, I ain't got no problem. She'd be with there church. all the time. She'd be there on Thursday night, Wednesday night, <laughs> probably Monday church. night. Maybe not Tuesday, but probably. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably true. I don't have no problem with church, uh, but I, I do understand where you're coming from. I do. I ca- well, kind of, I do. Yeah, I because know. you said it's not relational. Well, I mean, I know that's I know that's egregious. I do realize that. Define so, that's twenty five dollar word. Was that what egregious? Just you know, um, it's kind of across the board, a bad thing across the board. Mm, okay. You know, without being specific. It's just, okay. You know, so uh, I I I do realize that, and uh, and I don't I don't have a problem with church as biblical church mm. or God. Or anything. I probably not church. It's just the way we, the way I have been exposed to the way we do church. Because mm-hmm. everybody, we have a, our own vernacular, and I'm not saying that's bad. But how can you get? If the whole point of church, to me, should be to reach out to those that do not know God, yes, and to present God to them so that they could be part of the kingdom. Right. That's as a Christian. I right. mean, you might be something else or whatever, but that's as a Christian. When we that's say what church, we mean Christian church. Yeah, Christian church. And that's what 
in Christian church you're trying to do. Um, not beat people up or look down your nose at people or think you're better than others, you know. Uh, but church is to me is like a club. It's like you go into church and now you talk differently, you you dance differently, you which you know I mean you should I guess there. But anyway, um, you know, everything is like its own little secret society. Mm. And it's like, you know, you got to get invited in to, and do a secret handshake and all this kind of stuff. Mm. It appears that way, I think, to a lot of people, you know, to me. Mm. So um, I wish it were more. Where did that come from with you? Do you know? I, I when did just, you start feeling like that? I probably in my early 20s. Hmm. So I won't tell you how many years ago that was, but a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, huh. So, okay. So my question to you is what are you doing to change that? Um, at the moment, mm -hmm. complaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how are we going to work well, on that? <laughs> I, so, um, well, I've been working with a lot of young people. Yeah. Uh, you know, writing this book, I See You, has exposed me to a lot of different um, uh, viewpoints to toward church from people who are not churched. Right. And okay. listened. I yeah, listened. Uh, I don't know. It's over there somewhere. Mm -hmm. But I, I listened instead of saying, trying to tell them, no, you're wrong. This is the way you know church is, and this is, this is what you should do. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing that, I I just said, well, let me just see what people are trying to say. So that's what I'm trying to do. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay. So, you, so he <laughs> was re referencing Lord, his book, I See You, which I have to say I have not read yet. Um, mm -hmm. But this is what he's talking about. So he's the author of three three books. Just these three, right? Mm -hmm. I see you think on these things. Positive, encouraging words to think about. And loving Jesus, transforming lives. Both of these can be used for Bible studies or small groups. <laughs> so if anybody's interested in ordering or using them. But I, I, can't, I can't endorse this one because I haven't read it. I can endorse it because I know the person, who, the author, and he's great. <laughs> But I haven't read it, so I don't know. That was really more kind of like not a religious book, if yeah. you will, if that if I can use that word. The other two are definitely pastoral books, you know, Loving yeah. Jesus, Transforming Lives, and Think on These Things from Philippians 4.8. This one, I only have one chapter in there uh, about God, uh, but it's really about people perception, mm -hmm. how people perceive each other and how that makes them treat how that makes us treat each other the way we do based on our perception. So anyway, but that doing the research for this book, mm -hmm. I just interviewed a lot of people. You were part of, you know, we did a, a yeah. couple of focus groups at Excuse college me. campuses and that type of thing. And just listening, I think yeah. is what will help me to make a real change versus just coming at it from a religious standpoint. So well, that's it. Go. That's how I really feel. That's how he really feels. Can I say? You asked. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our take on saving us. If you like what you heard, remember again to press like, subscribe, and hit that bell. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.